Over the weekend, the Trump administration released its long-awaited Mideast peace plan called Peace to Prosperity. It's an economic plan the administration hopes will appeal to Palestinians and the larger Muslim world. So let's take a look at what the White House is proposing. The plan sets out a decade-long time frame, providing about $50 billion to the region. $27.8 billion, the largest chunk, would go directly to Gaza and the West Bank. The rest is split up between Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt, all of which has taken some substantial numbers of Palestinian refugees over the past years. Planning for how the money will be allocated includes $5 billion for a transportation network connecting Gaza, which is basically completely on its own over here, to the West Bank. It also includes a $1 billion worth of investments uh, in, the Palestinian, in building up the Palestinian tourism industry. And in all, there are 179 different projects slated in Palestinian territories and neighboring countries, all looking to address among other things, the needs for electricity, water, telecommunications, and health care. Now, beyond the economic numbers, the plan calls for new anti-corruption authorities to be developed uh, to allocate funds for educational assistance and including workforce training efforts. And here are the administration's metrics for success over that 10-year period. Double uh, Palestinian GDP, create over 1 million Palestinian jobs, reduce Palestinian unemployment to single digits, and cut the Palestinian poverty rate in half. I want to discuss some of this. Joining me now is adjunct senior fellow at the American Security Project and Palestinian human rights and anti-corruption advocate uh, Fadi El Salamin. Uh, he's also also joining us. Is I, I, are we joining? Are we getting anybody else? I'm just checking my. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry. So it's Fadi Al uh, Salamin. Fadi, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Good to see you, Ali. Let's talk about this. On paper, this looks good. Uh, the idea that uh, there would be something that will create prosperity for Palestinians, particularly those in Gaza, for whom prosperity is a distant memory. There is not a political solution to accompany this right now. Talk to me about the idea. Uh, is this an incentive? Is it a bribe? Is it hush money? What is this? I would say it's all of the above and none of the above. So it depends who you're talking to. From the Palestinian perspective, some see it as a economic solution and it has no political solution. But if you listen to some of the Trump administration officials, they say there isn't a political component to this. It hasn't been developed yet. It's being formulated. Um, then you go back to the Palestinian position and they say, uh, does the political uh, component include a two-state solution? Does it include the 1967 borders? What is it exactly? And can we hear it uh, from the president himself uh, publicly in an official statement? So it's still not very clear. But for me, as a Palestinian, I am somewhat encouraged by the economic component, but I do believe that it's not enough. You, you do need to put forward a clear political uh, component to this. Where, how is this money going to be spent? By whom? Uh, everybody is, knows that there is a Palestinian president now who has overstayed his, his term by about 10 years. So uh, there are allegations of corruptions around him, surrounding him. So people are going to be asking, who are you going to give 50 billion or 60 billion? How are you going to uh, distribute it? And to what end? Is there going to be a Palestinian state? Will there be an independent Palestinian decision body making uh, on how to um, obviously s spend this money? So these are all questions that no clear answers have been put forward uh, to, to address them, you, unfortunately. You as a Palestinian, yeah. you, you just said something that uh, when we, when we speak to Palestinians, you sometimes hear criticism of the Palestinian Authority, or if you're in Gaza, of Hamas. Who, um, who should be involved on behalf of the Palestinians in the creation of this and in answering your questions about who gets the money, how does it get distributed, what, it, what does success look like, and in the political discussion? Because Palestinian leadership does not support this effort. They, didn't, they, were, not in, uh, they were not in this meeting, uh, and they're not going to Bahrain for this meeting. You were invited. So just to, to be clear, from what I understood from my conversation with the foreign minister of Bahrain, no Palestinian or Israeli officials were invited to the conference. It is Palestinian and Israeli and American and other uh, businessmen, uh, thought leaders, um, politicians perhaps, but no Palestinian or Israeli officials are invited. The idea, Ali, is if you're a, a Palestinian leader and you know that your people are in a very uh, dire situation. You already spoke about the poverty and the high unemployment. You're being offered 50 billion. It's easy to say no, but it's much more productive to say 
No, but this is what I would like. This is what I'm asking for. The Palestinian position as it is right now by the current Palestinian president is not reasonable. He has to come forward to to state exactly what is he hoping for from the Trump administration. And maybe he would ask for more money. Maybe he would ask for more, uh, a much clearer position on the two states uh, solution. Maybe he would ask for a revised statement on Jerusalem. He has to engage. He cannot just hold his position as no, while Palestinians are obviously uh, dealing with issues like unemployment, poverty, and an Israeli occupation that has not stopped, obviously. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.